buy all the viral anti-aging beauty skincare products that you see on TikTok that could solve all your problems magically. You need to change this about yourself. You should be self-conscious about this. The beauty standard is this. Remember when it was that? Quick, this is the new Stanley cup that's trending. Wait, never mind. Now it's this cup. Have you thrown away your skinny jeans yet? Did that's you not even that in that's anymore. The new thing Did you see the new plastic surgery you can get? Your skin is Have you tried this it. new it can ten steps to make your skin even clearer. And you wonder why you feel emotionally burnt out all the time. Hello, you whippersnappers. My name is Salem, and welcome back to my channel. Girl, bye. <laughs> Anyways, how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing fun. I hope you guys are feeling festive. I hope you guys are feeling hydrated. I got my handy dandy mug with me today because I really do be thirsty. I look fabulous and you guys can't tell me otherwise. Even if some of y'all slid into my DMs telling me that I was giving you Gandalf vibes, at least compare me to the Yasified version of Gandalf. You know what thou shall not pass? These comments because you're blocked. This is gonna be me in like another 50 years according to Gen Z this is gonna be me next week if you clicked on today's video it should be pretty obvious by the thumbnail and title what we're going to be talking about today Gen Z and the immense fear of aging as well as this hyper aware culture that Gen Z has created where they are hyper aware of all their insecurities and easily give in to any product that goes viral on TikTok that promises them that it'll fix that insecurity. The obsession with starting gua sha routines at 15, getting mini Botox at 20, using sunscreen at 19, 18 so that you can already reverse aging out of the fear of looking your age, which is considered bad for some reason, as well as trends and filters that are used on TikTok to give people new insecurities that encourage young people to get surgeries it's starting to get really really bad and it's definitely time that we talk about it and this topic is a topic that i have always wanted to talk about because i have felt the pressure myself being in my mid-20s of almost feeling like i am expired minced meat that my golden years are already over until i realized wait a minute literally none of that is true i only feel that way because because society has convinced people that not only is aging bad, but that life stops being fun once you reach a certain age. The internet over romanticizes so many things that it's honestly kind of disturbing. But the one romanticization that I have seen that has been passed down from boomers, millennials, is this concept of you basically peak in high school and then your life's over. Which personally, I can't relate. I literally have only made three friends in high school who are still a part of my life. Shout out to Matthew and Helen and Samantha. I love y'all, y'all are my besties. Other than that, everyone else can frankly get kidnapped by Vecna. Oh. oh okay girl I need to chill I need to chill this video sponsored okay my bad I did not mean those statements legally it was a joke today's gonna be another long video y'all know the drill there's a lot a lot that I want to talk about that isn't only focused on the fear of aging but other proponents to modern society and Gen Z culture but I also want the main goal of this video to not only educate younger people out there or people my age who feel like that pressure is getting to them but also to re-inspire you guys to go out and live your life and literally not care there's no expiration date on your happiness and there is no expiration date that stops you from achieving your dreams or expressing yourselves which is why i love today's sponsorship which is thread up an online thrift store that you guys can use to express your guys selves in a sustainable way shout out to thread up for sponsoring today's video thread up is literally a godsend for baddies who want to live on a budget thread up is the world's largest online thrift store where you can find incredible deals on all your favorite brands all from the comfort of your own home i'm actually wearing one of them right now this shirt is so cute this is from top chic the retail og price was like 20 dollars, but i found it on thread up for 10 dollars. i have a couple of picks on thread up for you guys so you can shop my picks with my link down below and use code salem for an extra 40 percent off your first order i'm a huge accessories girly when it comes to summertime because i love going out on brunch dates with the girlies and i have found the the cutest accessories on thread up exhibit a 
today I thrifted these Armani Exchange sunglasses on ThredUp. And Armani Exchange sunglasses can range from $50 to $100. But I got these bad boys for only $16.80. I also love designer bags, but I don't like paying designer prices. I found this Marc Jacobs bag on ThredUp. Marc Jacobs bags are really spendy. Anywhere from $200 to $400. But I was able to snag this bag for $40, which is insane. I also thrifted this coach tote retail price like almost $150 but I was able to get it for $55 I also got this super cute summer top which is actually from Steve Madden OG price was like $35 but I got this for $13 so if you want to be able to express yourself through fashion and do so by saving money and shopping sustainable thread up is going to be your bestie for this summer I have a couple of picks on thread up for you guys so you can shop Shop my picks with my link down below and use code SALEM for an extra 40% off your first order. Thank you, younger me, for that ad read. Get that coin, sis. Okay, so let's get into today's video. Part 1. This is what makes up Gen Z culture. Is it toxic? What even is Gen Z? I feel like there is so many arguments as to when Gen Z starts and stops. Who is Gen Z? When is Gen Z? Well, folks, I finally have the answers for you. Gen Z is the generation after millennials, which were born around 1981 to 1996. And Gen Alpha, which is our newest generation, is between 2010 and 2025. So that means that Gen Z is from the years 1997 to 2012. Gen Zers from 1997 to 2000 are considered the older Zoomers. I was born in 1999. I was able to see my older sister listen to Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears, as well as overpluck her eyebrows and live to regret it to this day. And my middle sister, I was able to see her more so partake in the indie culture, YouTuber culture, and then I, of course, belonged to the worst era of the internet. No, because why was I literally like 13 years old on Omegle? The parental supervision did not exist. My parents really said, fend for yourself. <clears throat> the reason why I bring that up is because every single generation kind of have their main things that makes them a part of their own community. For example, boomers. <clears throat> I had something in my throat. Um, for example, the things that really identify boomers is the culture of being in the post-World War II, which means that their early years was filled with a lot of prosperity and optimism until the 2008 stock market crash. The second thing that's important to boomers is prioritizing traditional career paths and being fathered or grandfathered into certain jobs. They have basically set up the foundation for industries such as housing, healthcare, and retirement planning, which has all gone terribly so shout out to the boomers things that really identify millennials as a community they are digital natives which means that they grew up mostly with the rapid expansion of digital technology second is diversity and inclusion being extremely financially conscious because of the unique financial challenges they have faced the obsession with wellness and self-care now when it comes to gen z just as millennials gen z's are also digital natives where they grew up with technology and the internet has more of an integral part of their lives. Like Gen Z is known for its strong emphasis on social justice issues and activism such as LGBTQ rights. Gen Z is very heavy on diversity and inclusivity. But one of the most unique characteristics of Gen Z is the last one that I'm going to talk about. The last Gen Z characteristic that is very unique is Gen Z's importance and focus on self-branding. Gen Z is super skilled at curating their online presence and personal brand. They are conscious of their digital footprint and actively cultivate their image on social media platforms. Personal branding is often used as a tool for self-expression and for professional opportunities. This has definitely become a double-edged sword because it's also made so many Zoomers incredibly a lot more aware of their flaws and insecurities. This in turn making Gen Z put a massive emphasis and pressure on attaining impossible beauty standards, as well as contributing to the fear of being perceived. Part 2. 
The hyper awareness of Gen Z culture and the impossible beauty standards that they put on themselves. It's not Gen Z's fault why they're so obsessed with beauty. Our culture has always been obsessed with beauty, duh. Ever since like the olden times where Dumbledore was still alive and dragons existed. However, the reason why it has so deeply affected Gen Z the absolute most is because of them growing up with social media. Even though yes, they did grow up with people trying to normalize normal bodies and different body shapes. They also grew up around the age of Facetune, also grew up around the age of Photoshop, also grew up around the age of Instagram baddies and models. And it makes perfect sense because Gen Z's self-esteem and attitude towards themselves is actually incredibly poor. In fact, Gen Z has been labeled the least confident generation yet, with the majority of Gen Zers either struggling with severe body issues, self-esteem issues, anxiety, or depression. In social media being one of the main contributors to those negative feelings. I know this conversation, it always leans towards people who are the younger Gen Z, but also you know, around my age, there are plenty of people who look at certain you know, Instagram models or TikTokers and look at them and you're like, dang, I am a sack of potatoes compared to them. I'm suing my parents for making me ugly. Like very that. There is a massive, massive emphasis on having specifically these certain attributes to obtain the Gen Z beauty standard, which is to have no acne at all. You have to have flawless glass skin as well as super symmetrical faces and slim but thick body type. Those beauty standards that Gen Z have literally put upon themselves are literally impossible. Is it possible to have nice skin? Of course. It takes a lot, a lot of money to have nice skin. Obviously, there are cheaper options out there. There are dupes to really good and expensive skincare out there that can help you achieve the look that you want, but it's still gonna cost you money. And let me tell you something, guys. Let me tell you something. I have been part of this influencer world for a while now. And when I tell you the girlies with clear skin, perfect eyebrows and all type of stuff, they gatekeep. They gatekeep so hard. They do not want the plebs to know what they are doing to achieve that look. There is this saying that I heard circulating around that environment of you need to be incredibly high maintenance to appear low maintenance, which means I have to spend a lot of money in order to come across as effortlessly beautiful because the deeper and deeper I start Started to get into this influencer world like obviously people know the basics right which is eyebrow tinting and lamination so that it looks like your eyebrows are always done every single day there's also eyelash perming right or natural eyelash extensions but i didn't even know there were such things as nose filler or co2 laser skin resurfacing baby botox radio frequency skin tightening bro morpheus 8 i thought morpheus 8 was that one movie bro i meant morbius my dyslexia it just keeps kicking in. Obviously, I'm not shaming the influencers or celebrities who have access to these facials and baby talks and all type of stuff. If you can get it done, like that's awesome. More power to you. I myself am a high maintenance girly. However, as a high maintenance girly, I also know that a lot of these things aren't accessible to the normal everyday person. And all of these things really add up to be a pretty penny. It just will take a lot more effort and a lot more money, which is resources that a lot of normal people in Gen Z don't have. And also the beauty standard of having a slim yet thick body all simultaneously is crazy to me. And the thing is that I don't blame my generation for having these crazy standards because we look at people, you know, like Kylie Jenner, like Bella Hadid, even though a lot of people don't know that Bella Hadid has had surgery, but for some reason, everyone just kind of forgets and still compares themselves to her after photos, even though she was perfectly beautiful before. And that brings me to my next point, which is there is a huge normalization of Botox and plastic surgery within Gen Z culture. Part three, do you really have to fix your flaws? 
if you guys have been following me for a really long time you guys know i'm actually not anti-plastic surgery or anti-botox or anti-lip filler like i'm not anti any of this stuff if you have something that you feel like you want to enhance go ahead and do it safely healthily but there's a difference between people getting these surgeries and being open and honest about it and then people who get these surgeries and try to profit off of it by saying if you use this lipstick then your lips can be just like mine knowing damn well that it's filler that made their lips look like that and not the lipstick this is another video that i really want to make on my youtube channel which is gen z is specifically obsessed with the perfect nose like i run into nose job tiktoks all the time using these nose filters people will film their noses that aren't you know like this little button nose that's the standard right and they will literally be like i'm planning on getting a nose job like this is my last time feeling like this i hate my nose even though their noses are perfectly beautiful and like i said if you have an insecurity that you want to enhance with like plastic surgery or whatever that's your call to do but I really do believe it also has to do with intention if you're doing it to conform if you're doing it out of like intense self-hatred if you're doing it because you're being pressured by family members i just feel like getting plastic surgery or botox or whatever might not be the best route to take not only because you can end up kind of making a mistake because you realized it was actually an internal problem that you needed to fix also what's the point of gaining the approval of people that used to make fun of you like they're still gonna be talking and they're probably gonna point out more stuff that you should probably fix and I feel like there's a lot more pressure on me compared to someone who doesn't have social media and who isn't an influencer obviously literally everyone no matter who you are can feel the pressure of beauty standards but when you're at the forefront of the internet and you have thousands and thousands of people watching you it's extremely intimidating especially because people will literally comment what's wrong with you and give you new insecurities that you never knew that you should have i guess and this is because gen z is way too hyper aware for their own good y'all are way too hyper aware of how your profile looks how your jawline looks how your hair looks how this and that can we exist can we exist no one else is putting that pressure on you guys but yourselves y'all are the ones who choose the standards so why are we still continuously creating new insecurities every day and giving into them instead of fighting back every single day i swear where there is something new that people should be self-conscious about like i didn't even know what hip dips were until people start having conversations about it and like apparently it's something that you're supposed to hate on yourself and now i developed a new insecurity that i didn't even know i had and now i'm over here being like okay how can i fix it oh it turns out you can fix it through a bbl now i feel pressured to have a bbl because of just this immense fear of i need to hold on to my youth i need to hold on to my beauty for as long as possible or else i'm nothing or else i'm get kicked out of the cool kids club this crazy pressure of feeling like always on edge I believe I started Part my YouTube four, channel when I was like 20 aging, years old, but a lot of people thought I was 15 at the time or 16. But now that I've gone a little bit older and you can see a little bit of aging in my face, listen, it's made me feel ashamed, like less relatable, even though I'm still like just chilling. Like, hello, I'm not in a grave, but because of the pressure from Gen Z that is so obsessed with youth and age and everything, it makes you feel kind of like bad. And a lot of that has to do obviously with extreme sexism with specifically women as well as ageism but those are not attributes that are tied into gen z gen z has yet to prioritize ageism and sexism in aging at all actually if anything unfortunately i see more of a reinforcement of those stereotypes and very hurtful customs i know there are also so many gen zers that i've talked to who feel like they are too old to ever succeed anymore because the standard to succeed at like 12 years old is so high you know how many times i've talked to people who are barely like 28 and they're like what's the point of me doing this if like a 16 year old is already a millionaire and already has done this i might as well give up it's like i honestly don't know what to say because like i understand the feeling of hopelessness when you see someone way way younger than you become way more successful than you and it's also made younger gen zers feel bad too of like if i don't succeed and become rich next year i'm moving to china because there's no hope for me even though that shouldn't be a mentality that we have 
And something that I've noticed is that this is specifically prevalent in mostly American culture. Aging is seen as such a bad thing in American culture to the point where like in American culture, it's very normal for you to peak in high school and then like after that, nothing really happens with your life. In many other cultures, aging is looked at as a huge privilege and elders in the community are highly, highly respected. And basically like many Western cultures, there is an emphasis on youthfulness, beauty, and physical appearance, which ties into consumerism, such as influence of media, advertising, pop culture that glorifies youth and places a high value on looking and being young. The main reason why I'm heavily focusing specifically on American culture is because it's no wonder why capitalism kind of pumps out people with mental illness, comparison problems, unhappiness, unhealthiness, people who value things that are temporary and materialistic and I feel unfortunately that Gen Z is giving in to all those unfulfilled flaws within the capitalist system because of the American dream now also becoming a lot more unattainable since you know the nuclear family doesn't exist the golden age of the economy doesn't exist a lot of people are struggling more the rates of overall unhappiness have skyrocketed there's a pressure to be young forever to achieve your goals as fast as possible buy all the viral anti-aging beauty skincare products that you see on tiktok that could solve all your problems magically you need to change this about yourself you should be self-conscious about this the beauty standard is this remember when it was that quick this is the new stanley cup that's trending wait never mind now it's this cup have you thrown away your skinny jeans yet Did that's you not even that in that's anymore chuggy? the new thing did you see the new plastic bags. surgery you can get skin is have you should tried get this it. new route it can 10 steps to get your skin even clearer and you wonder why you feel emotionally burnt out all the time. Final part, it's never too late to start living your life. Did you know that Stan Lee started writing comic books at 17? But it wasn't until his first comic book in 1961, when Lee was 39, that he started to gain notoriety for his comics. Even though Morgan Freeman loved acting since he was young, he never gave up on his dream and got his first major role at the age of 50. Viola Davis had many small roles in different movies before her first big break. Her first big break only happened in 2008 when she got a role in the movie Doubt at the age of 43. Lucille Ball was 40 when she first starred in I Love Lucy, which didn't gain widespread success until 1951 when she was 40 years old. You know, it's never too late to keep achieving your dreams and life doesn't stop at a certain age. All you need to do is believe in yourself, not what's being sold to you, not the lies that are being told to you, or the distractions that the world purposely puts in your way to evade you from believing in yourself. If you want to dream big, do it. But it's also okay to achieve little dreams, like starting a family, picking up a new hobby, falling back in love with life, or simply appreciating existing. Loving yourself is such a difficult journey, but it isn't impossible. Even though it feels impossible in a culture where, again, you hit 22 and people think that you're done for, or if you get one pimple, you can't even go out in public. I'm telling you now, there is hope. As someone who suffered for years, years and years, I suffered from super intense body dysmorphia, extremely intense body dysmorphia to the point where I refused to go outside and I was so hard on myself for such a long time that it robbed me continuously of happiness. And I just want to tell everyone who's watching this who has struggled with body issues or image issues, feeling like they're unwanted because of their age, feeling the pressure of wanting to get Botox or plastic surgery or whatever, to the point where it's literally taking away from your happiness. I'm here to tell you that it's not worth it. Fixating on stuff that you were born with, your weight and all of these things, Yes, of course, you are free to do whatever you want with them. But if it's starting to make you feel empty, unhappy, and if it starts to rob you of opportunities in your life, such as such as being too scared to go swim at the beach because you want to have this unrealistic surgery body that these celebrities are pushing onto you, it's not worth it. It's not worth being so scared of being perceived as anything other than the 
super unattainable beauty standard when it starts to take away from you creating memories spending time with family spending time with friends aging letting yourself age the thing about giving into the negative thoughts and giving into the pressure and giving into these things that truly shouldn't matter is that it convinces you that what you're thinking is logical when it's really not look i get it it's so hard to escape that mentality but i'm telling you now take pictures of yourself go walk on the beach and clothing that makes you feel comfortable allow yourself to enjoy and partake in the beauties of life without letting society dictate how you enjoy them the pleasures of life are not just reserved for the young beautiful and the rich even though it feels that way it's for everyone to enjoy and if you're in a spot in your life where you feel like you do have to be skinny in order to enjoy something or you do have to be beautiful in order to enjoy something then you're probably not in the space where you're meant to be growing and thriving y'all also gotta be stern and set boundaries with yourselves start to unfollow people that make you feel bad about yourself you have to respect your own boundaries if you know for a fact that following a certain celebrity triggers you feeling bad then it's maybe time to block them if there's that one friend that you have in your friend group that constantly makes fun of how you look maybe it's time to cut that friendship the journey of loving yourself and putting yourself first is so difficult in a society that constantly pretends to preach about choosing yourself yet is selling you from left to right up and down these solutions of how you can first condition yourself in order to get into your better version before you can even get into the better version of yourself such as intense self-care skin care drinking green juice you need to have all those down before you can start to enjoy life that's a lie don't give in to that you can come just as you are flaws and all and still fully enjoy life you are born on this earth and you have every right to live a beautiful life filled with happiness peace and love and that starts with you prioritizing yourself all right guys that is it for today's video thank you guys so much for watching if you want more content like this comment down below first of all what you thought about this video Video and what your guys's take on the whole beauty standard situation is but also what you guys would like me to react to remember to like and subscribe if you want no one's gonna force you and if you made it to the very end of this video comment down a duck emoji down in the comments below so that i know that you guys watched the entire thing make sure you also click the bell button right by my subscribe button that's also right by my name so that you guys can be notified when i post on my community or whenever i post a video if you guys haven't already i am also on instagram definitely please go follow me on there at underscore sound tovar underscore as well as here on tiktok which is at salem tovar thankfully my name has yet to be taken anywhere so follow me on there and before i go you guys know i always give you guys homework which is to make today count do something that you love today go for a walk pet your dog play some roblox i actually have to dress down and get rid of all this stuff because i'm gonna go to a jujitsu class and i'm super excited for that and then i'm gonna come home and watch better call saul and eat tacos so i'm gonna have a fantastic rest of my day but i can't Care more that you guys can actually have a beautiful fun rest of your day so please make sure you make today count all right guys that's basically it for today's video i love you guys so much and i'll see you in the next video bye